Hey guys, welcome to the channel. I wanted to run through a full wedding edit using Resolve because I've been using that for about two years. This is gonna be Resolve 17, the new one that just came out. Um, so let me show you kind of what I do. Now this step is gonna be the most important thing that you do, um, period, is ingesting the footage, backing it up, and organizing it. I think this is the most important step because you don't wanna lose any footage, you wanna make sure everything's backed up. So. Um, I've learned some things over the years that are really help. So the first thing I do is I always have a wedding template folder. As you can see, this has everything, camera A, B, C, D, and E. Um, music for music bed, all the files that I uh, use, I put in there. And then sound, I have lab one, lab two, lab three, and the sound pre, which I hook it to the soundboard. And also I have a mic um, that I use sometimes, so I can add that in. But anyway, this is, kind of like the base folder. And this is a folder I use over and over again. That way I don't miss anything and everything's already here. So all I do is right click, copy, paste it, and then I rename it to whatever the couple's name is. Today we're doing 11, 14, 20, which was Morgan and Daniel. So I would change that to 11, 14, 20, Morgan and Daniel. So once I have the folder set, the most important part is backing it up. So I no longer use File Explorer to back up my footage or to transfer anything because it doesn't have checksum. Quick story, I did a commercial shoot, transferred everything over, um, I thought, and I went back. I didn't end up losing any footage because I always um, check the footage again before I delete it. And I was actually going back in to work on the project and I noticed stuff was missing, but I still had the memory card, of course because I hadn't deleted anything yet. But anyway, um, I went in and the first thing I've been doing probably the last six months is I've been plugging in all my cars and transferring the information simultaneously using File Explorer, um, which is not a good idea to do. It should do it. You should do it just one at a time. And I never had a problem until that day. So I went in and I actually notice that a bunch of files are missing so i'm like okay this didn't transfer all the footage even though i had it selected and everything so i went back in i fixed that and then i noticed one of the files one of the c200 files half the file was black so i went back got the memory card plugged it in and i tested it and i could see all the footage so the megabytes matched up on the card and on the pc but it wasn't playing so i don't know if it got corrupt or what so I fixed that, and then there was another file, a black magic file that was completely black, even though the megabytes match both on the card and on the PC. So from that point forward, I was able to stumble across the clone tool, which uses checksum, which backs up your, it actually checks the backup essentially, using some method I couldn't tell you anything about. All I know is that it works and it's automated. So let me kind of run you through what I do. So you're in the clone tool, you're on the media tab, and the clone tool is right up here. If it's not selected, just click on it. You're gonna go add job, find your source. My source is usually JLM, that's my SD card drives. So I'm gonna drag that over to source, drop it in, because that's the source. That's the CF card or the memory card. And then my destination is gonna be um, the drive I'm transferring it to. So that would be up here in Morgan and Daniel. So let's assume that I've already done this, but we're gonna pretend like L is the C200. So I'm going to drag camera A, C200 to destination. And then the great thing about this is I'll have my backup drive plugged in as well. So let's pretend that M is the backup drive. I'll drag that over to M. So not only will it transfer to the SD card, it'll also transfer to the backup. And so that's job one. And then I go through for each card, for the memory card for C200, I go through for um, the Samsung T5 drive for the Pocket 6K. I'll do source and destination and um, the backup destination. And I'll do that for each camera. And then all I do when I have all the, all the, you know, cameras, in the clone tool, it'll say job one through six or seven. I'll essentially hit clone and I'll go to sleep. And then I wake up, everything's cloned and everything's copied. I put my hard drive in the safe and then I'll start 
working on this project. So now that everything is cloned, I'll go up here to the media storage and I'm in media drive or mega drive one, which I call my mega drive is 14 terabytes. I'll go to Morgan and Daniel. And what I'll actually do is I'll drag this Morgan and Daniel right here. Make sure you put it on the left side and not in the right side. If you put it on the right side, you'll lose all the folders. So I'll drag it into the left side and I'll drop it in. And then I'll have literally this right here. Everything's right here, as you can see. A, B, C, D, E, sound. Everything will be right there. So now what I can do is click on you know, camera A and I can do the next steps. So it's already done here, but I'm gonna show you what I do. I wanna click on a folder. I'm gonna be on metadata. All right, make sure you click on met metadata to expand. And then in this little drop down box with the arrow, make sure you click on that and you're doing shot and scene, shot and scene. I change the camera to A if it isn't already. And for every camera except for A camera, I'll change the color, all right? So basically you'll hit Control A or Command A on the Mac. And then you just go through and change the camera to camera B, A, or whatever. And then you just hit Save. I'm gonna hit Discard because I already changed it to A. The next thing I do, Control A or Command A on a Mac. I use Tentacle Sync, so I have time code on all of these files. I'll hit Update Time Code from Audio Track right here. Again, Control A, right click, Update Time Code from Audio Track. When I do that, it'll take about a minute. As you can see, all of these files have time code on them. Starting from 10 o'clock, 10, 10 50, until 6 13 or 18 13, because it's in military time, obviously. So boom, all that's done. Now I'll go through, go to camera B, control A. My computer's freezing. I'll do control A. I'll go over here, change it to camera B, and I'll change my clip color. I change my clip color because it just makes it easier to see if my edits are getting stagnant and I'm using the same camera angle over and over again. And I just like seeing different colors. If I see a really colorful timeline, I know I'm using different angles and just different things like that. Just a preference thing. You don't have to change colors, but I do. So boom, I go through, I do that. And I do that for C, camera C and camera D. Update the time code from audio track, change the camera number and change the clip color. You have to change the camera number or angle so that when you use multi-cam sync, it'll keep the cameras together, all right? So now that the, everything is done in regards to that, I'll move on to the next step, okay? So the next step is I like to go to the top and we're gonna use camera A, for example, and I want to sort by duration. When I do that, I can see the longest clip to the shortest clip. We already know what the longest clip is going to be. The longest clip is going to be probably your ceremony, your toast, first look. All the really important stuff are the longer moments or the longer clips and the shorter stuff is usually beat row. So I'll go through each camera and I'll put it, I'll drag it over, create a bin called ceremony and I'll drag ceremony from each angle over to the ceremony. And I'll go through and organize everything. I do this for a couple reasons. Being organized is the key um, to getting your edits done quicker. Secondly, it allows me to look at everything and know everything is actually there. Even though I use checksum, I could have made a mistake and clicked the wrong thing. This just allows me to verify everything's there. That's why I like doing it on day one and two because I'm gonna organize everything and sync everything together. So that way, when I come back to the project, when I'm able to, I know everything is there. So, boom, I'm going through and I'll organize everything together. And as you can see, I've already done that. You can see all the different cameras, camera A, B, C, D, 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 
the mix pre, my labs, all that's together. I'll go through and do the same for the cake, camera B and C, um, bouquet and garter toss. Organize that all together. First look, camera A and C were used. Gifts, camera C, enter on first dance, camera A, B and C. I don't know why that one's there. Oh yeah, I used three cameras. So anyway, that way, now all your really important moments to organize and are together. And so that's pretty much what I do for part one or on day one and two, that night and then the next day. As I do this process, every time I make sure everything is there, I make sure everything's backed up. And then in addition to this, um, it usually takes about a week, but everything will end up uploading to Backblaze. That's what I use. It's unlimited. I have probably 25 terabytes on my hard drives all together and it backs up everything to the cloud. So I have a backup on the computer, I have a backup in the safe, and I have a backup in the cloud within about a week. So I feel really comfortable with that and I haven't had any issues. Um, so, so the next thing I like to do, if I usually have time is, I'll go ahead and do a multicam sync and sync everything together. But we'll do all that on part two. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Let me know if you have any questions or anything you saw that might make my job easier, or my life easier, or if you have any questions about my process, any suggestions. Thanks. Um, take care and uh, keep filming.